Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and um, I've gotten a lot of questions lately about how to handle soap dough, so I thought I would make a video so I have some place to reference, so when I get the question, you could watch it, because it occurred to me the other day that when I first started soap making, reading was not on my priority list, as much as I did read, but I couldn't calm myself. I was so excited, and so I watched a lot of Soap Queen TV, a lot of royalty soap, and I was really excited to see other people make soap for some reason. That affected me greater than if I were to sit and read. Now I read tons of stuff, but at the time I was just too excited. So I thought I'd make a video so that I could explain some terms. So then again, I have a reference. Okay, so I'm talking about cold process soap. And cold process soap and soap dough are the same, but they're treated a little different at the end. So let's just begin. So hopefully you have a working definition of how to make cold process soap. So cold process soap is made with lye and butters and fats. Okay. Lye becomes lye. Sodium hydroxide is inert until moisture is introduced to it. And then it becomes active. And once you introduce moisture in the form of generally water, but it can be other ingredients like aloe, which is water-based, or tea, or coffee, or any of those things, because people like to infuse things into their water and then put it into the, to the lye, and, or put the lye into the water, never the other way around, and then put it together and make their soap. So once the, the lye, or sodium hydroxide, has been activated, and, it, and then it is poured into the butters or fats that you've chosen to make your soap, they have to find each other and match. The molecules find and match and bond and become soap or salt. And a salt, okay, not the salt, but a salt. So they, they have to find each other. That process of finding each other starts the minute that you put lye with butters and fats and goes on, it can go on for many hours. Um, a good, my working window is 36 hours. So, and then I still am, uh, well, okay, so let's just leave that. It's 36 hours. Now, that means that the saponification process is going on for 36 hours. It starts way up here and then it goes down as far as volatility, okay? So you can touch it in any way, at any point through here, but up here, it's, it's more dangerous to touch it here. And why is it dangerous to touch active lye? Because it seeks fat and oil, and that's what all this is, fat and oil. And it becomes corrosive, right? So it wants to match, it changes. Okay, so as far as soap dough is concerned, a lot of people ask when you can touch it and start to handle it. So... I wait 36 hours, I wait three days, leave my soap in the mold after I've poured it. I cover it with plastic, I put a little board on it and I stick it on a shelf and I leave it. I don't gel it, I don't cover it with anything else. And, and I give you a lot more information in my book if you wanna read my book, but I'm gonna give you the overview right now so I, because I, this is time sensitive, I can't go on at length about all this. So you pour it in the mold, you cover it with plastic because I wanna, uh, thwart or retard the evaporation process. I don't want it to retard, so I have to stop it in some capacity. So I put it with plastic and I put the top on. This also, if you spray it with um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol and cover it, it also helps to minimize ash. That's another helpful thing. It's not, it minimizes, it doesn't eliminate. Well, I could talk about that another day. But anyway, so then you pour it and you leave it and you leave that for three days, okay? I take it out of the mold, I cut it in two so it'll fit my bag, and I wrap it with plastic and I stick it in a Ziploc baggie. Now we're in curing space. This is all, this is, once the saponification is done, now we're ready to be cured, okay? Now in a regular bar of soap, you would cut that and sit it on a shelf so that it has more air exposure so it'll cure. So that goes into the six week period which means you don't want to use it for six weeks because there's a lot of water in it and, it and the structure isn't hard enough and the bar will dissolve faster. So you can use it, totally fine to use it. After saponification, you can use it. Ideally, you don't want to do that. So when it comes to soap dough, what you want is to leave it another three days in the bag. After you've taken it out of the mold, you've wrapped it with plastic, put it in the bag and leave it another three days. 
And this is where I've learned that saponification has this bigger window than what we think. 36 hours is great for non-volatility. And you can touch it after 36 hours. It's not going to burn your skin. But there's another process that's happening that is subtle. And if I leave it in the bag, if I take it out of the mold right then and touch it, it's sticky and it doesn't work very well. But if I leave it another three days after the unmolding and put it in the plastic bag, then it works a lot better. And it's completed its process. And now I'm happy because it's not as sticky. So what we do with soap dough is we've taken cold process and stopped the evaporation process. We want to keep the water in it. And somebody else has asked me, no more than one person has asked me, how long does soap dough last? And soap dough lasts, hard to say, don't really know, maybe up to six months. So what I do is um, I check my soap dough periodically because I want different colors. I have a variety of different colors I've either mixed or made or whatever. And I'll go into it, and if the plastic on the soap, and I put dates on it too. So if the plastic on the soap dough has been, is like it gets cracked or like it starts to get, like uh, it changes the structure, like the plastic's really bendy and stretchy and everything. If it starts to crack and feel old, I replace it. I mush it up so I activate the, the water that's deep inside the, the soap dough and pull it out to the surface so that it, all the water's mixed within that ball of soap dough and then I wrap it in plastic and stick it back in my bag and it lasts a lot longer that way. Um, I've had soap dough last up to six months and use it and it's better than ever and then I've had soap dough that I have for a few months and it got hard. So it, I think it just depends on how much I unwrap it, wrap it, and use it and all those things. There's a lot of different things and maybe I'll have more information um, in the years to come about that. But okay, so now here, here's another term. So the two terms we're talking about is saponification, which is the activation of lye butters and that whole process of 36 hours, which can take longer, and curing. Curing is the evaporation of water from your bar of soap. It's not volatile. It is, it's definitely advantageous for, um, if you want a really hard bar of soap, the longer you can let it, you know, eight weeks, let it cure, get really hard. So the other day I made chicken soap again, one of my favorite soaps to make. Um, and that's freshly, this is like three days old, two days old cut, I think. Okay. This one's about a month old, the very same recipe, exactly the same recipe. Right. See, look at that. That's how much it's cured. This one has shrunk and compressed. Okay. And it's really hard. Now, if I push on this too hard, my finger is going to dent it. You can even see my fingerprint. I don't want to do that. But that is curing right there. And so it, there isn't any problem with using the soap. It's not a danger issue. It's not a volatility issue. So also, it's not a volatility issue to use soap dough. It's a curing issue. So what we've done with soap dough is we've... Um, leveraged curing and the water in it so that the soap dough stays moldable. That's all. And I happened to you know, develop a recipe that I found to be consistently good, where it doesn't crack, it, it, it's not too sticky, it's not too dry, and I can make it so that it, you can mold all types of stuff with it so it doesn't stick too much in your molds and all this other stuff. And that's why I offer what I did, because the question was, if this is a process that we all do, and lots of people just take the tailings of their soap and then they mold it or they make soapstones or whatever, then what do I have to offer that's unique? And what I have is that after thousands of pounds of soap, I've developed a recipe that works really well. And that in order for you not to go through that process, I offer soap dough sometimes. Well, I do offer it all the time, but I have to stay in stock, you know, with different colors and stuff. So I, that's what I do. I offer soap dough and I wrote a couple books about it. And um, I don't know everything about soap dough. I know, you know, enough to make what I make. And so anyway, this is why I wanted everybody to, well, not everybody, but you know, people that watch this channel are interested. Um, I wanted you to know that um, to have a working definition of saponification and curing. And I can write the definition down. I also have a blog post about it where there's diagrams. You can see the molecules as they, they attach to each other. And, and 
um, to listen or, or read as much as you can about saponification so you really get that definition. Because what happens, well, what happened for me is that I lost my fear of lie, which is great. I always wear glasses. I always cover up. I wear rubber gloves, all that stuff. Part of the reason, well, yeah, I always wear rubber gloves. I just do because I don't want to hazard that. Even, and I'll tell you, like when I master batch um, lye, um, water and lye, and I take, a, I have a long stainless steel spoon that I used so that I don't have to get close and I wear rubber gloves. Sometimes I'll just wear short sleeve shirts and when I'm mixing in there, the fumes come up and well, I could feel them on my arm. So like Soap Queen, Anne Marie, she abdicates covering up completely and she sells glasses. And I think that's pretty smart. It's a pain in the butt, but it's really smart. And, you know, sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't do it. And I pay a price for that. You know, I've gotten little sp splashes of lye on my skin before. And if, you know, so use your, your best judgment and listen and if you have you know instead of cowboying it just you know be a little cautious about it and so that's really that's why I want to say this because I also want to say that you know I'm glad that you're asking questions and you're trying to understand soap dough and it, it's sort of a different mindset which you know we're taught not to touch it very much but there is a place to touch it and it's totally fine. And to be aware of that curve of like, you know, super volatile when it first gets active and then it starts to degrade at a certain point. The volatility degrades, not the soap. The, so then it's less and less and then it's it's perfectly fine to touch it because other people wanted to use it with kids and to know how to use it with kids. And it's just cold processed soap that has kept all the water in it and it's not evaporated. So anyway, um, again, it, 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 that's cured. See, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see. Cured, cured, not cured. Like that. And see, the top doesn't get beveled, so it's just like, it just shrinks. That's all. This one's eight weeks or no, six weeks. This one's a couple days. So there you go. I gave you a visual. I hope that helps. And um, you're grown people or not if you're watching but if you like it if you're attracted to this site like it subscribe do all the things um and uh oh one more thing so um every friday now i've been putting up video or putting up interviews on the blog and they seem to be going really well people are interested and i'm happy to be able to shed light on some people that you know don't get a lot of light shed on them and you know, this is a humongous community of people, artisans that craft and, you know, some of us work sort of isolated and we don't do shows, we don't do fairs, so our work doesn't get seen that much. And so that's what I want to do is, is highlight um, certain people that, you know, have been, you know, grinding away or not grinding away or just having fun or doing whatever. So if somebody sparks your interest and you want to know more about somebody, well, would you let me know? You can let me know in the comments here or email me or whatever because, you know, I don't want to just focus on my circle and I want to expand a little bit more. And I know there's other people. There's tons of people from all over the country, all over countries, like, I mean, all over the world, different countries in our group, Sorcery Creation. So, you know, if you if you run across somebody that you think is really interesting and you want to know more, let me know and I can contact them and see. Because, you know, hopefully there's a lot more weeks we can keep doing that and then everybody gets to read about them. Anyway, so I try to keep this under 15 minutes and I'm just under the wire. So thanks for watching. Um, thank you for all your support and all your great comments and your encouragement and the crazy amount of creativity that's going on right now with Soap Dough is just, I'm shocked and surprised pleasantly in all aspects. And I watch it every day and I'm like, holy cats, who would have thought this is just, you know, because nobody needs, nobody needs a soap with chicken on it. But holy cats, is it fun to use? Seriously, just fun. And I can't explain why and I don't even care. It was just fun. So I'm glad other people have found it fun and found it fun to make and share and do all those things. Okay, have a great day and I'll talk to you again.